How do you know how many paper flowers you need to make in one paper flower backdrop or wall? It is one of the questions that I am often asked on my socials. So the answer to that specific question is simple. I do lay them out, but I do feel that in making a paper flower wall is a project itself that has many layers or steps. And so in this video, we are going to discuss just that. And so I figured I'd like to break it down and discuss the whole topic of how to start making a paper flower wall or a paper flower backdrop. But before we start, I'd like to introduce myself first. I'm Dini, by the way, I'm a Filipina paper flower artist and designer based in Rochester, New York, and I'm the creative behind Dini Weenie Blooms. I have created, made, and installed a couple, um, probably 30 plus, paper flower wall projects, installations, and uh, you name it, paper flowers in the past couple of years. So just to give you a context, before my life as a paper flower artist and a crafter, I have worked as a shopfront display and exhibition designer. And my experience from that past life is a huge factor on how I tackle or how I manage um, projects such as this. Okay, so before we really start, I don't wanna keep my videos too long and I want to break them into digestible pieces. So in this video, I just want to give an overview or a summary of the steps in managing a paper flower wall project. But each step will have a specific video that will dive in more on the topic and those will be released in the next couple of weeks. So folks, before we really, really start, do like this video and subscribe to my channel because there's definitely going to be more. Okay, so without further ado, these are the five steps that I feel we need to make in order to, for us to manage a paper flower wall project. Number one, know, list, or determine the requirements. So whether you are working with a client or just for yourself or basically if the paper flower you are going to make is just for your inventory, so know the list or requirements that or parameters, I'd love to call these parameters, that your paper flower will have. So for example, number one, what would be the space or the size? So what will be the area? And then number two, what, what will be the colors? This most specially will be important if you have a client so what is their wedding colors or what is their basically the colors for their event then what would be the type of flower so just an example um i this was like last september so i had a paper flower wall and the bride wanted to be an all dahlia paper flower wall so my flower wall would be all dahlia and don't forget what is the time that you are allowed to set up because that's also an important factor in determining the flowers that you need to make. So once you know the requirements, you can proceed into step number two. Build an ingredient list or know the ingredient list. So ingredients. So I often hear this term into real flowers. We can definitely use it in paper flowers. Why not? So when I say ingredients, what would be the type of flowers that will be included in your paper flower wall? So this is where you decide what will be the flowers and the sizes of the flowers you will be using. And then number three, this for me is the most important in determining <laughs> or this for me is the step that answers the question how do you know how many paper flowers do you need to make for your uh, specific paper flower wall project and in this step i do get from my experience as a, a designer before so i do lay them out so in this step it it can become technical just because for myself I do use computer aided graphics. So I use so I do use Inkscape, for example. You can also well Inkscape is is a freeware, that's the best thing. It's easier to use in a PC. Um if you have an illustrator, even better. So I also use Illustrator, but I just often use Inkscape and it's a freeware. You can also use, if, uh, you, if you use Cricut, you can also use that program. Determining the sizes of the flowers is very important. In this step, to briefly show you, what I do is I make a shape that is the actual size of the required space. 
I then make shapes. The easiest would be circles that will represent the flowers that I have decided to use from step number two. Yeah, and from that space, I just cover that main space with the objects that represent the flower that I plan to use. And once I've covered that, I do break them down. And then that's how I determine more or less how many 18 inch paper uh, Dahlia Cafe Ole do I need to use? How many 10 inch or like 8 inch Dahlia do I need to use? But here's a disclaimer. So this is not a hundred percent accurate but it i'd say like probably 70 percent but this gives me an idea of more or less how many more do i need to make so i strongly suggest or i really suggest like just probably like add one or two on that list and once you have an estimate number of how many components you need to make then let's proceed to number four make a cut tally so what do I mean by this? So this, again, it gets a bit more technical and um, math-ish that I wanted it to be. But, you know, even though I hate math, it, it's just part of our lives. And so what I do is I do um, place it in, in an Excel file. Of course, you always have your uh, Sheets or Google Sheets, which, which is free. And then this is how I kind of like lay it out again. I'm going to show you a sample of what I usually do. So disclaimer, what I'm showing here is truly unusual. I'm not an organized person by any means. And my cut tally is usually all over the place. Seriously. So based from what we did from step three, I have listed the breakdown of the number of flowers per kind here, segregated by color. It was easier for me at the time. And on this next column, I have an example of how I broke down the pieces of the templates for me to be able to know how many sheets of paper I need for one flower. So here, uh, for an 18-inch Dahlia Cafe au lait, I need 19 papers per flower, and that is shown here. So from this cut tally or computation, I have an estimate of more or less how many sheets of paper I need for my whole flower wall. Yeah, so more or less, I have already know the number of pieces that I need to make and the number of papers that I will be needing for me to be able to cut those number of pieces. Which brings us to my last step, do the work. So since you've determined how many packs of paper you more or less need to order, so this is the part where you need to order basically your materials and then probably order a pack of glue sticks. And then with this, you decide whether you hand cut or use a cutting machine. And if you will be using a cutting machine, then buy cutting mats because you probably will need like 10 of those. But in this last step, because you've done like the first four steps, more or less you need the materials that you will be needing. So at least you are prepared to tackle on your project. And after that, once you've got everything, you assemble them and then you just work, work, work. <laughs> Yeah, so again, this is just a summary. This is just a breakdown. I don't want to expound and um, take your time. Yep, so in the next couple of weeks, we will be releasing more videos pertaining to each topic. So we will delve more. And of course, I will be giving like a real life example, which will be my paper uh, paper dahlia flower wall, we, which I have um, put up last September. And this part of my current inventory. But yep, thanks for your time. If you have any questions, please, please uh, feel free to leave your comments. And again, please do like my videos and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much. See you in the next video.